Well, Jim, I'm glad you're here. I'm kind of surprised to see you're coming back today. Well, I'll tell you one thing. I sat out in the front here for about an hour before I come in. And I was about that, that close to just cranking that pickup up and heading back home. I'm, I, I'll let you know, just like I told Rich, I'm not real happy about being here. Mm -hmm. I hope you understand that. I'm hearing you loud and clear that being here is not something that's really a high priority for you. And <laughs> I'm looking at you and you got blonde hair. You know, I, I, I haven't had a lot of luck with blonde hair the last couple of weeks. Is that right? Well, tell me a little bit more about that. Well, I got assigned a probation officer and she's a blonde haired gal. Mm -hmm. And I think she's out to just destroy me totally. You know, she's, she's talking about me getting a lot of jail time and this big fine and, mm -hmm. and everything that she's going to do if I don't do certain things. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I just kind of think maybe you're going to do the same thing to me. So it seems to you like I might try to push you around and make you do a whole bunch of things you don't want to do. Yeah, and, I'm, and you know, I'm, I'm about up to here with this kind of stuff. I hope, I hope you know that. Probably isn't your fault, but mm -hmm. that's just kind of the way things have been going. You You're know? pretty fed up. Yeah, my daughter, you know, she... Uh... <sighs> Won't let me see the kids. Your grandchildren. What's that about? Well, she'll let me see them, but she won't let me take them anywhere anymore. Really? And, and that really has me upset, you know. Uh, she's afraid that I'll, I'll take them, hurt them, driving around drunk, drinking and driving, things oh. like that. And I never have hurt one of them kids. Mm. So she's afraid that if you take the children with you, that you'll be drinking and then you might hurt them or get in an accident? Even when I say that, that I wouldn't, I wouldn't drink. She still won't trust me now. And, and that's really got me upset. It really got me ticked off. So the fact that your daughter won't even take your word for the fact that you won't drink kind of bites at you a little bit. Mm -hmm. And she said, you know, well, you need help. Well, <clears throat> you know, when she needed help, I damn sure didn't mm -hmm. uh, put any kind of condition on it, mm -hmm. you know. And, and I'm not going to tell she means I need help, you know. I, I've always bailed her out. I've always helped her financially. If she needs mm -hmm. kids watched. Mm -hmm. Anything she needs, old daddy's always giving it to her. Mm -hmm. And I don't know where she's getting all this from. This is really... What does she say to you about her concerns? Well, she says she's afraid that, you know, I'll, I'll do something that'll hurt the kids. Uh -huh. But, uh, you know, I never hurt them kids. I never have in my life is done a thing to hurt them. Kind of a mystery to you why she'd even be worried about that? Ever since my wife moved out. Mm -hmm. I think she's just taken an attitude with my wife, you know, that... Uh, she's siding with her for some reason, mm -hmm. you know, up, in, uh, up until my wife moved out, things were going pretty good. Mm -hmm. you know, my, we're not divorced, but my wife is kind of upset at me also. She's, uh, she moved out a couple, three months ago. Do you kind of have the feeling that your wife and daughter are ganging up against you? It feels that way. I don't know if, it's, you know, if that's true, but it, I just kind of feel like, what they call it, once they get you down, everybody jumps on. That's the way I feel now, you know, the, the, mm -hmm. since that uh, DWI, the car wreck and everything. Mm -hmm. And my wife's left and my daughter's, you know, ra raising cane with me. Now my probation officer's wanting to, mm -hmm. to eat my lunch, put me in jail and, mm -hmm. you know, break me financially and things. I, my, my boss has all but said if I, if I lose my driver's license, I won't have a job there. I've got about three more years to go before I retire. Mm -hmm. So a lot of what, what I'm doing here, you know, or why I'm coming here, the only reason I'm coming here is so that I can maybe save my driver's license, I won't lose my job, so I won't lose my house. Mm -hmm. It's not because I want to do any of this crap. You know? yeah. You're not here because you think you have a problem. You're here because they sent you here. Yeah, the court sent me here. Mm -hmm. And that's the only reason you're here. Yeah, I'll be honest with you. There's no need me lying to you because, uh -huh. you know, uh, Unless you go down and tell the court that, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not motivated to be here or anything. But I, I don't like any of this, I'll be honest with you. you know, it's taken a lot of time that I don't have. It's taken a lot of money that I don't have, you know, for the court and the fines and mm -hmm. all this stuff. Mm -hmm. and on top of that, I've got to pay my lawyer $1,000, which I don't have, mm -hmm. uh, to, to represent me. And, and I guess he's probably one of the reasons I'm here today. Cause, yeah. Yeah. But, you know, he and I drink together. Mm -hmm. I've known this guy ever since he was got out of law school. Yeah. And uh, he's a good friend of mine, but uh, I said, well, wh why do I have to go up there? I'm paying you $1,000 to represent me. Now I've got to go over 
and, and go through this evaluation and all that, that is, does not make sense. And he's like, well, you've got a drinking problem. Hell, you know, mm -hmm. I've had to take him home a lot of times. Mm -hmm. that I've been the one standing, he's been passed out and, and couldn't walk. You know, this doesn't make sense. None of this makes sense. So it's confusing to you why your drinking should cause a problem or everybody should be talking about that when you look around and you see that other people drink more than you do. Well, at this point in my life, it'd be different now. I mean, <clears throat> 10 years ago, mm -hmm. I, I probably would have taken my medicine without being too cranky about it. Mm -hmm. but, but let me tell you something. I've changed an awful lot in 10 years. I used to be a rounder. I used to fight. I used to rodeo. I used to drink a lot. I, I made a living hauling rodeo stock and everything. And, and now I've settled down the last, you know, eight, 10 years. I got me a good job. I'm, I'm, I'm driving short distance uh, hauls. Mm -hmm. uh, I drink a little bit, but I work hard. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's nothing for me to sit down and drink six pack or two of beer and still be able to function. I'm not like one of them bums you see laying down there by the bus depot on the lawn selling his blood and stealing the hubcaps. Mm -hmm. I've never stole anything and I've worked every day uh, since I got a social security card. So it's kind of the same thing you were saying before, which is that it feels like everybody's looking at your drinking, but it's just not as bad as everybody thinks it is. You might say that. Mm -hmm. I don't know that it's true, but you might say that. Uh -huh. you know, well, let me ask you this. Since you've been forced to come here, and since you're feeling like everybody's kind of pecking on you like a crow, there's a bunch of crows flying around pecking on you about this thing about your drinking, what would you like to do with the time that you spend with me here? What would be helpful for you? I don't know, because I ain't never been in one of these situations. This is all new for you. Yeah, and people keep saying you need to stop drinking. I ain't never done that either. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, I think I could. Mm -hmm. I've tried a couple times and I wasn't very, <clears throat> I think one time I quit for a week or two mm -hmm. just to show people I could stop drinking. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't too happy. And I really, I didn't know why in the hell I stopped anyway, but. Uh, it almost sounds like you don't know whether you could stop, even if you wanted to. <laughs> That's funny thing to say. I can do just about anything, but I can't say yes to that, you know, that I can stop. Mm -hmm. I think you're right on that one. So you, it's a lot a, of things I can do, but you know I've never tried to tried to stop drinking uh -huh. and get thinking about it honestly. Uh -huh. What are the kinds of things you think would keep you from being able to stop? What would get in your way? I got some buddies. They're pretty, mm -hmm. pretty much like me. I'm not the, uh, I'm not the leader of the pack, but I, I don't, none of them boss me around. But we all go down to the lake on the weekends. So we've got a, we've got a spot out there. We call it the bunker. We all. I take our boats down there and we all meet over on the, the east side of Elephant Butte Lake there and we, we've kind of cleaned it all up and made a campsite out of it and you know we get down there and hoop and holler and shoot guns and, and have fishing contests and do the wrestle around once while we toss somebody in the lake, things like that. Mm -hmm. but, Sounds like you guys uh, have a good time. Yeah, and I don't know how they'd feel about me quitting drinking, you know, I don't know what oh. they'd call me. So they might have some names for you, or they might, you know, say things about you. Well, the first thing they say, well, well, I probably couldn't hold my liquor, you know, mm -hmm. that's why I stopped. That ain't true. I can out drink any of them. What would that be like for you if you didn't drink and you were around them? What do you do for a living? Well, you know, I'm a psychologist. Okay, well, what would you do if you couldn't be a psychologist? Yeah, it's hard to imagine, isn't it? Yeah. And that's yeah. what it's like for you. You can't even imagine you what You couldn't it give me an answer, and uh -huh. I can't give you one. Uh -huh. So that's just kind of... I, that's a hard thing. Maybe that's something I need to think about before I even do any of this stuff, you know, mm -hmm. that you're talking, or they're talking about. Mm -hmm. What else do you think might get in your way besides this thing with your friends and maybe not having things as easy socially as they were? Well, I'm kind of an uptight guy. I have a hard job. I work around a lot of old boys that are pretty rough and tumble, and mm -hmm. I drive long ways, and I unload big trucks, and. I get tired. Sometimes I like to sit down and have a drink. So drinking kind of helps you relax and, and, you know, cope with your life. When I get really angry, I, you know, I, mm -hmm. I don't have to go slap somebody around. I used to now. When, when I was young, younger, I'd, I'd go over and somebody would upset me or irritate me, I'd take it to them. Mm -hmm. But since I've gotten older, I kind of, you know, three or four beers, I kind of cooled down a little bit. You know, you've mentioned that twice already, that you used to be more hot-tempered than you are right now. 
What do you think caused you to kind of become less angry and less uh, uh, violent? I got put in jail a few times. <laughs> it was one of them. You know, I used to go down and hang out in some pretty rough places. And uh, I got, got thrown in jail a couple of times. Uh, disorderly conduct and mm -hmm. public brawling and mm -hmm. things like that. My wife had to come bail me out of out several times. It got pretty costly doing that, mm -hmm. that kind of Even though I enjoyed it, it was kind of, uh, it got a little bit costly and I got bad bad name in town, things like that. You know, people, I'm, I'm from a little, small little town up 20 miles north of here and mm -hmm. everybody knows me and they, they kind of, especially the policemen, they, they know me pretty good so they don't, they don't cut me no slack anymore. So it looks like that was causing you problems in a lot of different areas with the law and your family and other people in town. Well, just like this. Think my DWI. Did Rich tell you about what happened to me? Yeah, he did. And I was sitting there at the damn stop sign. My, well, first of all, what happened was Saturday morning. Mm -hmm. And we were all going to the lake. I had my boat hooked up to my pickup. And then my job called me. said they wanted me to come out there and uh, just drive one load mm -hmm. uh, out to Hamas Springs and back. And then I'd be off for the rest of the day. Well, I'd already had three or four beers, maybe more. We'd partied last night before. And I got up and I was kind of feeling bad. So. I had three or four drinks early that morning, but I was just going to the lake. I wasn't going to work, and you know, it was mm -hmm. my Saturday off, and then they called me. And I went ahead, and, and, and I was on my way out to, to the job, sitting there at that four-way stop sign, and this old woman, she must have been 100 years old, come flying down the road and crashed right into the back end of that pickup of mine. And the police come, and uh, damn if they didn't arrest me. Mm -hmm. And they said it was my fault for being there. Now, that didn't make sense. You know, some, some kids or a school bus been sitting there, that woman or wiped them all out. She's lucky she hit my truck. You know, it didn't tear it up too bad, but it bent it pretty good. But So just because you were drinking, they kind of used that as an excuse to yeah, pin put, the accident on you. Put it you. on me. Uh -huh. She walks away scot, scot free, tore my pickup up. Now I got to pay for her car or fixing her car in my pickup. And then I, I'm the one having to pay all the penalty because somebody's grandma got out there, couldn't see, driving around crazy. You know, it's really weird, mm -hmm. really stupid to me. That's got me upset, too. Yeah, it sounds time, like it. time I think about that, you Yeah. Know. And this, this accident is what caused you to have to come in here and got you in all that trouble at work, and now they're thinking about taking your driver's license away, and that's why you got to come here. Yeah. Is there anything you guys can do maybe about me keeping my license and all that? You know, could you say something to my... That witch I got for a probation officer may get her off my back, or is there, you know, I wouldn't mind doing some of this stuff if there was anything in it for me, but so far I'm having to pay this and pay the lawyer and pay for the wreck and pay for the evaluation and everything, and so far old Jim ain't got nothing. Okay. Well, let me just say that I think here in the treatment center, we really don't, we try not to get too involved with the legal aspects or the legal trouble. But lots of times people who have a DWI come here and they stay in treatment for a while and they quit drinking and then usually if that happens they're kind of out of trouble with the DWI and with the probation officer. But you know, it, it, I don't know whether that's something that you're interested in at this point or not. This treatment center thing, is that here yeah. at this facility? Yeah. And what do you all do? We do all different kinds of things. We have all different kinds of treatments here. Uh, some people uh, come here and live for a while. Some people come on an outpatient basis. Some people come with their family. Some people come by themselves. And there's just all different kinds of ways to do it. There's definitely more than one right way. What's the, you said people come here to live. Do you think I'd have to come here to live? Well, I think, you know, you're the one that really needs to make that decision about what's the right kind of treatment for you. I, I couldn't decide that for you. I wouldn't mind coming here to live, but I wouldn't want to be in one of them places where you sit around in pajamas, a bunch of long-haired hippie types crying and bitching and stuff like that. That ain't my, my style, you know. So you're kind of wondering what it would even be like here. Well, I've seen pictures of things, you know, watch TV and some of that stuff. Mm -hmm. How long do you think I'd be here? Well, again, I think that's something that you need to decide what, what kind of treatment you want. I mean, there's some guidelines, but on the other hand, you would need to be the one that decided. Well, I want something that help me in court. Mm -hmm. Can, can you guarantee it happened in court? Or? Well, I surely can't guarantee it. All I can say is that people who have been here in the past, you know, we have been able to help them with that. And you know, there's another thing I was thinking about. You know, <clears throat> if I don't stop drinking, I'm probably going to be right back in this mess again.
you know so not maybe not right away but somewhere down the road it sounds like if you look ahead and take a look at your drinking and see where you're going to go with that you're kind of worried about that yeah because you know if i get out of this if i you